Now it's time to find how the king reacts to all of this. Most likely he will not be in a good mood when he hears all that is going on. He's also probably not in a good mood that people are running in and out of his throne room mounted on goats. Ah! And here is Gimli. Hello there, Gimli. It is time we spoke to King Thorne about the stout axes, don't you think? Let us get on with it, Pineleaf. Well then. Hail, Thorne the Third, King Under the Mountain. I come before you today to ask for your wisdom and mercy. In my adventures beyond the Black Gate of Mordor, I discovered a clan of dwarves known as the Stout Axes. They are a hardy folk, but they have been beset by tragedy at many turns. They have lost their ancestral home, much as we of Durin's folk have in the past, and they have suffered under the Dark Lord and his servants. Their leader of old, King Greytooth, succumbed to what power lingered in the rings once wielded by the greatest kings of the dwarves, and led the remainder of his folk down a dark path to ruin. The stout axes were thus sundered, but I have come north with those who survived, and they did not lose hope of ki that kindness could be found beyond the mountains of Mordor. Their number is small, and they have no home beyond these lands. I beg you, King Thorn, offer them a place among us, and they will offer their knowledge, compassion, and skill to Durin's folk. Let us see what the judgment is of the king. Gimli, son of Glowing, I have known your father and your family for many years. I have heard your words, and I will bear my judgment. As you well know, the Dale lands are filled with refugees of the east, and among them, the unfortunate cousins of the hated Jangovar. Regardless of their heritage, I see their plight for what it is. I trust your words, Gimli, and I would not deny those oppressed by Mordor. The stout axes shall have shelter with an Erebor and be welcome as friends of Deering's folk. However, these are difficult times. Sacrifices have been made by each of the kingdoms of the north, and more still will have to be made before we are healed the ills of the war. If the stout axes are to dwell among us, they must earn their place among our folk, and share their knowledge of the enemy and the lands beyond. You may inform the stout axes that they have found new homes in Erebor, but see to it that they offer their skills and all in need. Very well. You have heard his response? Ha! It is as I hoped, Pineleaf. Ambassador Spackworth and his folk will be so grateful. They will understand what a king of the doors ought to be. Now then, as for earning their place, I must admit, Pineleaf, I had begun to worry that King Thorne would not see the need for Durin's folk to welcome the Stout Axes. I am pleased that he has proven to be a merciful and wise king. Ambassador Spackros and, and the rest of his folk have traveled far to stand in the shadow of the Lonely Mountain, and in time I am certain they will come to see it as the Longbeards do. Aid Ambassador Spackroth and his people in earning their place in Erebor. It is the least we can help do to help them in what we have lo what they have lost. Very well. And now, Your Majesty, uh, there is another matter. Can Gandalf combat this worrying decline in our craft skill? I am as concerned as any of my people about the worrying decline in the skill of the artisans. But I do not know what can be done about it. Dying before me also did not have a solution. Do you and Gandalf have a suggestion, Pineleaf, 
I am willing to hear any proposal, but I am not confident any solution can be found. <laughs> Wait till he hears what Gandalf thinks may be a possibility. You wish to open the tomb of Thorin Oakenshield? Yes, to ensure that the Arkenstone remains within? None could have reached the tomb without our knowledge, Pineleaf. And yet, even as I speak these words, I am gripped with uncertainty. If the heart of the mountain has been taken, it might explain the diminishment of our crafting skill. Ooh. Yes, Pineleaf, we should learn if the Arkenstone still lies within the tomb or if some enemy has taken it. I alone cannot give you leave to open the tomb of Thor and Oakenshield, though I am king under the mountain and possess lordship of all that lies within. It would not be proper to open Mazal Akraz without the permission of Thorn's sister, Dis. Her children also lie in that place, and I would not have their rest or that of her brother disturbed without her leave. She is the keeper of Raven Hill Pineleaf, and that is where you will find her. Speak to her, and learn if she will allow the tomb to be opened. Very well. Then let us speak with Peace. Oh, uh, apparently I also need to speak with Gandalf. Hello there, Gandalf. Now, listen here, and listen close. Thorn Oakenshield's sister Dees is very old, and she is unlikely at first to be very accommodating to our request. She will look more favorably upon it, I expect, if she were to see the familiar faces of Thorn's old friends and companions. But not all at once. Such a crowd will set her ill at ease, and she will not allow the intrusion. I think there may be a way... Oh boy, this is going to sound familiar. <laughs> I am reminded of an old trick that was used to m of use to me during the quest to Erebor, when Schmog still lived, his stolen hoard unrecovered. I will let the remaining dwarves of Thorin's company know of my plan. For your part, speak to Dees, and be as friendly and as helpful as you may. Mm-hmm. I suspect he planned something that he did to Bjorn at one point, but that we'll have to determine. Now, before I go see Dees, let's see if Spockor is anywhere about, just in case those assignments align in any way. I believe I found Ambassador Spockor. Hello there, Sparkhorth! Hail, Pineleaf! What did King Thorin have to say? Yes. I am overwhelmed. Such kindness has never been given to my folk, and the terms he has offered are more than fair. To live and work among the dwarves of Erebor would be an honor. I have heard that many of the dwarves of Erebor are fond of crafting the mountain itself. If you were to gather loose stones from the slopes of Erebor, our rune carvers could shape them into rune stones for the king and his folk. Gather as many as you can bear, and bring them to the rune carvers. They will know what to do. Very well, I will look for those. And what else? And that reminds me. I think the dwarves of Durin's folk would benefit from the skills of our smiths. I know that many of them still wish to rest from the journey, but... We must prove our worth to King Thorin. Convince them to go to the forges and work amongst the dwarves of Erebor, and I will see that they do not toil to exhaustion. Very well. And it looks like we have a couple others who also wish to... speak with me. Hello, and what do you need, Noth? Hail! What news have you from Ambassador Spockworth? Yes, King Thorn is a very generous dwarf indeed. I will send as many stout axes as I can, but a few of our number have taken ill for the long journey to the north. We were beset by heavy rains before we arrived, and our cloaks were drenched. 
I do not know if that is the source of their ailments, but it certainly did not help. If you could, bring their warmed cloaks to them. I left our cloaks by several of the forges in the fires and fires of the hall, so that they should not be hard to find. I also think they could do with a healing draft or two, if you understand my meaning. Yes, thank you, Pineleaf. You have done so much for us. I hope we could return your kindness one day. Healing drafts. Yeah, I think I get your meaning there. And what do you feel, dreary? Oh, greetings, Pine Leaf. Can you believe this place? It still seems a dream to me. What can I do for you? Hmm. Well, that is a bit of a coincidence. I sent out several of our number to hunt the beasts of the north. It seems to me that we should fill our own food stores, and we stout axes are more than capable of a simple hunt. However, your aid will bring us more welcome. Bring me as many cuts of boar meat and venison as you can. Boar and venison. You know, like, no one's ever asked me to hunt boar before, right? Right. The more things change, the more things stay the same. I am guessing that this is the <laughs> healing draft that they're looking for. Yeah, another <laughs> healing draft. And I'm sure we'll find plenty of these healing drafts all over the place, uh, as well a few Stout X cloaks. Close enough to the fire to get warm, but hopefully uh, not so close to the fire that they can catch fire themselves. And here's another cloak. And more drafts ahead. Hello there. The ambassador has asked that when you have your strength, that perhaps you could start showing your skills at the forges. It is a strange thing to know such comfort. For King Thorn's kindness, it is the least I can do. Alright. That at least went well. Hello there, here's a nice warm cloak and a little something to drink. There you go. And here you go. The king under the mountain has shown us such kindness. And there you go. And here you go. Alright. Good, that's all delivered. Hmm. Now, let's see, what else can we help with? Here we are at Raven Hill. It's a bit craggy. Probably suffered a bit during the invasion. Ah, this must be Dees. Any greetings, ma'am? Yes. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Oops. <sighs> yes. She stares at you. Hastily, you begin to talk about the Arkenstone. But before I could properly word the request, she interrupts me. The heart of the mountain. It lies with my brother, Thorn, beneath the mountain. I have not visited him in some time. Yes. The path down the hill is choked with brush and stone. Someone should do something about it. Mm, well, I think I could do something about it. Boop. Yep. Dave Glodorf sends me out to work right away. But yeah, it does seem to have a bit of rubble on here. And I don't think that the running up here at full speed on goats is going to help your chances of keeping your footing. Just saying. That could be dangerous. 
Running up at full speed for Jagged Path. Over here and there. There we go. And any more brush around here? A little bit more. There. Anything else to... Ah, yeah, here, here's some more up here. Now perhaps we can get back to her. It appears that while I was working, Glowing and Dwaline have arrived. Uh, hello once again. <sighs> well, the conversation has left me parched. Ah, yes. These are my cousins, coming from afar. Dwaline is the steward of Thorin's Hall, in the Blue Mountains, and Glowing acts as emissary for the king under the mountain. The conversation has left me parched. If I am to entertain visitors, I would need more water to refresh me. Hmm. Well then, I suppose I'll need to find a well. And I will presume that there is a well down here somewhere. I certainly wouldn't want to be too far away. Ah, here's a well. Hope no one's going to ask me to jump through it or anything like that. Ah, here we go. Uh, that should refresh her and maybe be able to further along the conversation. Is that you know, where there is a well, there is a way. And back to Raven Hill. Hmm. Apparently a few more friends have arrived. Bomber. The younger dwarf. The one we met before. Bofer. And Beefer. I am back. This is a day for visitors. Beefer, the keeper of hammers, and Bofer, the master of chisels, have come to Raven Hill. Even Bomber, the warden of the larders, has paid me a visit. Figures he'd be warden of the larders. Most unexpected! These dwarves accompanied my brother and my sons on the quest of Erebor. Hmm. Yes, now, about the Arkenstone. Oh, yes, Bomber's progress up the hill was slow, and he had told me he spied a number of foes in the vicinity of Dale during his ascent. I cannot think about the heart of the mountain while my neighbors are endangered. Yes, of course. Let's remove the danger from the neighbors. I will presume that she's talking about these wolves here. They seem dangerous enough. Ooh, Dale as wolf. What big eyes you've got. Uh, what big teeth you've got. What big wounds you've got. And it appears that Gandalf has joined the party here. Hello. More friends have arrived. And the wizard too. Yes. As friends, I do count Dory, the high horde seeker, and Nori, the keeper of coffers. They are my distant kin. Of the wizard Gandalf, I have fewer kind words to speak. Hmm. Ah. Uh, there is nothing else that needs doing right now, but do not think I am unaware of this plan of yours. I have so few visitors on most days that this low trickle of friends and kin must mean something. You might as well tell me. What did the surviving members of my brother's adventuring band ask of his sister? Hmm. I don't want to hear it from you, wizard. I want this hobbit to tell me. Well, spit it out. Oh, fun. 
You think the heart of the mountain has been stolen from my brother's tomb? My brother Thorn was entombed in Mazel Akraz with the Arkenstone and with an elven sword beside. You think the heart of the mountain has been stolen? What thief would dare disturb the Oaken Shield's rest or risk the guards of the tomb? No, do not try to convince me of this. There is no need. It has been too long since I visited my brother and my sons where they lie beneath the mountain. I will allow you to ensure that the Arkenstone remains with Thorn while I pay my respects to my brother and to Feely and Keeley. I am old, Hobbit. It will be a good for Durin's folk to know the fate of the heart of the mountain, and it will benefit my own heart to see my lost kin at least one more time before I join them. Tell the wizard he has permission, but do not go alone. We will all go together. What will Gandalf have to say about this? And what will we find when we go to the tomb? We'll find that out in the next episode of Pineleaf in the North Kingdoms.